Hello, it's Leanne back here again with a project that I've done for the Our Mixed Media Moods, which is hosted by Jen and Dee Dee. And the challenge this month is featuring these plums and violets colours. I've called it uh, Lesson 13. It's just a little tag or something. And just did a trio, so that's the inspiration there. I just gathered up some supplies. I'd been using these um, tea bags, um, you know, the water infusion ones. And I thought, oh, they're perfect colour that matches the board. So I thought I'll use those. So I started off with some Dilutions tags, and I've just mounted some heavy cardstock on the back of them, just because I knew I was going to do a lot of mixed media um, on them. And then just trimmed those little tabs off the top. And then I'm just going to journal on it just with a Sharpie pen. And I was actually um, cleaning up my area before I started the project and found some baby wipes in the bin that were actually the same colour as the mood board so I decided I was going to try and use those in there as well now looking back my mood board's probably a bit light because there's a lot of plum colour and a lot of deep purples and I didn't quite use all those colours in there but we'll see how we go so after my journaling I'm just adding some washi tape it's just a Tim Holtz one um, and also some masking tape um, just to build a bit of texture so I end up doing quite a few layers on this one. Um, I knew that whatever the end piece was that I was going to do a um, faux encaustic look to it. Didn't quite turn out how I had it in my head, but you know, I still like them. That's the main thing, isn't it? And it's all about experimenting, I think, with mixed media art. So I've just got some book text, um, just with some liquid text, matte medium. I'm just applying that again just to create a bit of interest in the background. So don't forget to um, join up with the Facebook group for Our Mixed Media Moods. Um, about the 20th of each month, um, Jen and Dee Dee upload a new challenge and it's really, the boards are really quite fantastic so there's always some amazing layouts to go with them. So I've just ripped up some calico there and the baby wipes. Um, you can see the colours on that baby wipes are cool. I probably should have just used the whole baby wipe as a background. Still got enough left over. I might do another piece yet. Who knows? So just layering those up and I love the threads. And yeah, I don't really try and place the threads in a particular order or anything. Just however it goes. I must admit these colours aren't really my colours, I don't work with purples or pinks very often, so it's a bit different. So then I decided that I wanted to cover the whole tag with just a light gesso wash. Um, so I've just got some of the Atelier Primer gesso, I really like this, it's really thick, but then to do this you have to do, I do add a bit of water into the mixture just to really thin it down. Then I've got these stamps, it's a Viva Las Vegas stamp, I think it's Royal Butterflies I think it's called, that I had stamped on some tissue paper. Um, in the end you don't really see these very much, you can see like little smidges of them. But again it's all about layering for mixed media pieces isn't it? And then I just got some, it's a willow charcoal layout, just to add some lines. And then these are the tea bags. Um, as you can see, they're, they're quite, like they look pinkish, but then as soon as I've added the wet medium to them, they actually go a purple color. You know, but we'll work with that. Um, just adding some more of the washi tape again to it. And then I'm just going in with my favorite, the deco art crackle paste, just to add a bit of extra interest to the piece. And I get out uh, Lindy's stamp game Magical Shaker and it's in the Magnolia Magenta Gold which is a really lovely colour. Um, but I put them on and then in a minute I'll drop on a bit, little bit of the black antiquing cream on and just sort of spritz it out with water as well. And then when I looked at it, like I had to leave it dry for the crackle paste and that and I thought it was too dark. 
but in hindsight it probably wasn't but again it's all about experimenting and playing with it so here I've decided that it's actually really too dark so I just go over it with again with some um, gesso I scrape it onto there and then I just apply heaps of water with it and then I just get a baby white and just sort of press it into it and take up some of the white gesso so it actually ends up pretty cool I really like that how it comes out so I'm just going in and I'm just going to add some more journaling and then partway through the last one, my actual pen runs out of ink. It's typical, really. But that's right. It's still there. And then just with the stabilo in the graphite, just adding some scribbly lines. And then I want to put a bit more of the tea bag in there. And this time I'm going to adhere it to the piece with um, the cracker paste again. So just with a palette knife, just uh, palette knife, just adding some scrapings of that. And then adding a little bit more washi tape and a little bit more masking tape. Some of the elements sometimes I find I, I lose what I like in, in the piece so I just bring them back in. So that's basically what I'm doing is I really like the washi tape look and um, so I'm just bringing it back into the piece. You'll see in the end that some of the um, the ends of the washi tape actually curl up a little bit and I don't mind it it actually adds a little bit of something to it so I'm just going through um, finding some little sayings or just little words from the um, Tim Holtz clipping set um, I put one down there on that right piece and then I end up removing it there's a couple there that I end up removing so it's more just to have a little bit of text in there I like there to be some sort of sentiment in most of my pieces. Um, it may not be a big quote or a game changer or anything like that, or it might just be a couple of words. In this case, it's just a couple of words. And then I just get a stabilo out and do a couple of little circles just to add some interest. And then doing my usual, going around the outside with the edging it with the stabilo and then activating it all loosely with water. I just love this look. Just, I do it all the time. I think it just, I don't know, there's something about it that I really, really like. And then I've just got some Atelier acrylic and it's just in a quinacridone red violet and I've just dotted the centers of those um, pieces. When it actually dries, it doesn't, they're not that bright, so I go in again and re-dot them. I think I do that off the camera. Sorry. know why that went really bright and the sun must have come out. It's been so hot here lately. It's been not as hot as other parts of Australia but pretty darn hot. So. And in the end when I apply my mixture to the top to do the encaustic type look I thought oh, I'll have to leave this for not to overnight for sure. And I actually just sat it in the sun in my kitchen and it was dry within an hour which was pretty interesting. So I'm just darkening up a couple of those pieces. You can see how I've put those a um, bit more red or that quinacridone paint in there. Then I've just got a uh, mechanical pencil out. I'm just doing around the circles. Again, adding some more marks. Um, and then I do a little square or rectangle around the sentiment, the sentiments as well. 
and then I actually decided that I wanted to do some stitching so I just get out some thread it's another one of these threads that have got um, a gradient effect to it so it goes from a dark purple to a pink to a white um, and I just go through and I just pre-punch some holes and then sew in some X's across the circles so it kind of becomes the feature piece Part of these, um, this piece and sort of dry, it removes your eye around the three pieces together. Oh, hello, cat. So these guys are almost done. Um, I just get out some Liquitex ink acrylic ink in the white, just do some splatters with it. And then I go to do this testing of this um, the faux encaust encaustic. Um, I have the beeswax there, I just haven't been game enough to try it. So I will, it's, it's something on my list of things that I must try this year is to really give the encaustic a pop go. But in the meantime, we'll try this effect. So I've just got some Atelier Matte Medium, um, some, oh sorry, that was Liquitex Matte Medium. Atelier, it's a heavy gloss. And then I put in a bit of the um, Tim Holtz Distress Crackle in the Rock Candy. And I just mix it up and then apply it really, it is quite thick over all the pieces. Um, it's not a smooth surface either. Um, I like the way it dries, but part of me was thinking, do I go through and put a little wash over the top of that, but I haven't yet. So it's, I'm still deciding, the pieces are still on my table, um, but I'm, I'm calling them done for now. So that's what they look like, and then this is how they come up all dry. So this is my take on the mood board, so... I love the layers, the textures, the little pops of colour that come through. With all of these pieces, I, um, the middle piece is probably my favourite, I think. I don't know why. I think it's the, the little bit of extra white that comes through on it. So there you have it. Um, head over to the Facebook, our mixed media group. Um, have a go at the challenge. Um, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, comment and subscribe.